make a full video just about the cells that are present in bone tissue. Some of these you should already have know the names of. So osteoblasts and osteocytes are the two names for bone cells that you've heard before. So there's two more terms that we're going to introduce, one of which is a mature bone cell. So here are the cell types that are found in bone. Osteogenic cells, the word genesis, right? That means making. So osteogenic cells are stem cells um, shown over here. I'm trying to get the right, there we go. Um, shown over on that left. So I'm trying to get my spotlight to work here. There we go. Over here, osteogenic cells are with in that endosteum that surrounds the spongy bone tissue. And these are, surrounds the medullary cavity. And these are stem cells. So they are the only type of bone cells that can actually go through mitosis and reproduce and divide and make more bone cells. So these are gonna be important when we talk about um, bone growth. So remember that um, cell specialization occurs early in development and cells are to specialize or differentiate and to develop into different tissues of the body. So this is review from week two. We talked about cell differentiation. Um, as the cells specialize, they mature and lose their ability to divide. But in most tissues, there are still some less specialized cells present that retain the ability to divide. So these are multipotent stem cells. These mean that they're still hanging around, able to divide. Um, another example of this would be in the basal, um, stratum basale of the epithelial tissue of your skin. Those cells are dividing in order to regenerate skin all the time, so your skin is growing. So that's an example we've talked about before. Um, Stem cells are present in adult bone marrow that give rise to red blood cells, another important one. So that's your osteogenic cells. They are gonna give rise first to osteoblasts. You already know osteoblasts are your immature bone cells that are producing, synthesizing collagen, that matrix. That collagen matrix is then gonna hold the calcium phosphate in the crystallized form but the osteoblasts are what actually produce and then excrete out that collagen in order to produce the matrix. So those are located out here, um, right inside the periosteum that surrounds the bone. Those osteoblasts develop into osteocytes. You know already that osteocytes are mature bone cells that get trapped in the lacuna after the osteoblasts have produced all their Collagen, they kind of bust out the collagen, calcium comes in and traps these osteocytes. The osteocytes leave these lacuna, these spaces around them, so that they can have some space to live, their little home. Um, these are the canaliculi that connect adjacent osteocytes to each other so they can still obtain nutrients because they um, are trapped in the matrix otherwise. I'll talk more about this developmental um, going from osteoblast to osteocytes a little bit more as we talk about bone growth and development. So the last type that we haven't talked about before, really important still, are osteoclasts. So down here, um, these are larger cells. They have multiple nuclei, as you can see in this picture. It's kind of unique in that way. They are clasts. I think of that as um, kind of like calamity. I think it reminds me of it, they, they break down bone tissue. Um, so blasts are making collagen and clasts are killing collagen. They don't literally kill the collagen, but they break down bone tissue, dissolve it. Um, this is going to change calcium phosphate levels, release it into the blood. This will be really important for um, blood calcium pH levels, as well as bone itself, the remodeling of bone in adulthood. So those are our types of bone cells. Here we've got um, a little description next to each one. Produce new cells, synthesize collagen, 
maintains the matrix, maintains the bone tissue, kind of chills out, and then breaks down the matrix. So a little bit more about osteoclasts since the first time you've heard about, heard about them. Um, and this is an example of um, how important even these cells are in adulthood. So we'll talk in the next lecture about linear bone growth that occurs as a person is growing taller. Um, even beyond that though, bones still are dynamic tissues that undergo continual remodeling throughout life. And osteoclasts are really important for that. So they attach to inside here. They're kind of um, in this matrix here, the bone matrix attached to that endosteum. And they're kind of like a, a suction cup. Um, they're going to actually secrete HCL, so acid, um, hydrochloric acid, oops, is going to break down the bone tissue. So that acid breaks down the calcium phosphate crystals um, and releases calcium into the bloodstream. Osteoclats also produce like proteolytic enzymes, protease enzymes that work at a low pH, and then that's going to break the combination of acid and these enzymes are gonna dissolve the bone tissue. So I like this image for kind of showing that um, process, literally eating away at the bone and releasing this con that material into the bloodstream. So quick learning check here. What I want you to do is match each of these four cells based on these kind of schematics of the pictures. I have a hint for you here, there's arrows. So this is like the order that the cells develop in. Match each picture with the name of that cell. These are not in order here. Um, and then the functions of each one. So please pause to do that. Okay, so this was our stem cell, osteogenic cell produces new cells. Osteoblasts are the matrix, matrix synthesizing cells, produce new brain, bone matrix. Osteocytes are the most mature bone cells that maintain the bone matrix. And then our osteoclasts, note I have this line here instead of an arrow, because this is not part of, these don't develop from osteocytes. They're gonna develop independently from osteogenic cells. Um, other than that, we do have these in kind of order, osteogenic cells divide into osteoblasts, which mature into osteocytes. And osteoclasts are a bone resorbing which means bone dissolving cells. Resorption means to dissolve, resorb it, take it back up again, keep that stuff, put that stuff back into the bloodstream. Okay, another um, way of kind of understanding this is to look at where dysfunction occurs. So osteoporosis, you've probably heard of this, um, especially in people who, so one risk factor is um, older age, Menopause. Menopause is older women who have gone through, no longer are menstruating and no longer have certain hormones on board. Um, lack of bone stress, so not having bone stimulation. We'll talk about remodeling in a different lecture. Smoking, diet, and genetics are other factors for this. Um, and so a diet low in calcium, for example, vitamin D and protein. It's cool, it's actually smoking reduces calcium levels, so then you have low calcium in the blood. Um, calcium, yeah. So what happens in osteoporosis is bone resorption is going, is happening at a faster rate than bone deposition. So bone is being broken down faster than it's being deposited. What cells are more active in these individuals compared to other cells? So osteoclast activity is more than osteoblast activity. And we'll come back to this with bone remodeling as well. But this is a way to apply your knowledge of these cell types into how they can um, certain dysfunction. One more learning check that's application of this. Um, so postmenopausal women, women are at higher risk for osteoporosis. Um, estrogen levels decrease in menopause. So with these two pieces of information, do you predict that estrogens increase or decrease osteoclast activity? You don't know for sure, right? But given the information, what would you predict and explain? So hopefully you predicted that estrogens normally decrease osteoclast activity. And menopause, when um, a female has estrogens decrease, 
then you would have osteoclast activity increase. Um, this is causing bones to resorb more than before. And this actually is one of the mechanisms um, for older women, why they tend to get osteoporosis more often. Okay, what we've done here is list and describe the cellular and extracellular components of bone tissue. This one's kind of integrative of things we've done before, right? So this should have been review the different cell types that are present as well as collagen and calcium phosphate. This one overlaps with that a bit. So explain the roles of specific bone cells in the formation, maintenance, and destruction of bone tissue. So osteoblasts, osteoclasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts. Um, and then also knowing the terms of the, the stem cells that are osteogenic cells. Ossification is a term that I um, don't think I said. We will be looking at that more with growth. That's the production of bone tissue. So ossification is the making of bone tissue. 